Okay, let's get started. So today we're building an altar out of some old plastic bits. Got some um, half-finished testing cubes from my 3D printer, the lid from a tub of protein powder, and some spare testing cubes I managed to finish after my 3D printer was done setting up. I'm also going to try and not break the skinks I've been painting. I also have some expanding Gorilla Glue, just because I've been wanting to experiment with other glues people might have lying around in their house, or gathering dust in a toolbox and things they can do with that. We're just going to see how this works, and we'll start by getting these unfinished blocks glued around the edge as a, a bottom layer to build off of. The real goal here is just to make the best tabletop terrain I can with cheap, dollar store hobby supplies and whatever old bits of plastic I would have thrown away. I mean, just to prove you don't need to shell out big bucks to Games Workshop to get good terrain pieces. Once the glue has had time to cure, we can start using these finished cubes to build the bricks out of our altar. I'm going to try and block off these lettered sides and fill in the letters with glue wherever I can before we even start applying the texture material, but we'll have to just see how that works out. After that, I trimmed off a little bit of excess plastic, and then broke out the one semi-professional art supply that I do use on my garbage terrain, my bottle of matte medium, which I'm going to use a lot. For right now, I'm just testing to see how well this will cover up the remaining litters on these blocks. The brush I'm using is just a regular makeup brush I picked up at Walgreens for 8 or $9, and it provides really good coverage, you know, because that's what it was designed to do. I'm applying a thin layer to all of these blocks, as well as the base to help cover up the layers created by the FDM printer, so hopefully these can pass for real stone. I'm also stippling the medium onto some of the smooth plastic bits to try and add just a bit of texture and dull down the shine before priming. And after that, it's going to need all night to dry. Ah, that's not covering quite as much as I wanted. I'm going to try another layer and see if that helps at all. I'm putting even more medium into the lettering, so it's going to need even longer to dry. That's a bit better, but unless I want these access letters on my ancient stone altar, I'll need to try and cover them better while applying the texture paste. Now be careful, this is a, uh, a very complicated procedure I'm going to use here. In total, the ingredients I used are coffee grounds, Elmer's glue, parchment paper, and a paperclip. Paperclip is just to apply the paste. The glue should be thick enough that if we fold this clip into a fairly small hook, it'll spread just fine. The coffee grounds I'm using are actually just used grounds I would otherwise have thrown away, but baked on a wide, flat sheet in the oven until absolutely all of the moisture has been released. I also used a fork to break apart any clumps and didn't take it out until the grounds were completely dry. After that, we can just spread a thin layer of Elmer's glue once the paperclip is used to unclog the tip, and apply that across any layer we want to be textured to look like broken stone or dirt. After that, I'm just going to dump the grounds directly on top. With a larger container, it's actually easiest to just dunk the whole model into the grounds and shake off the excess. I do that a lot with my miniatures, but I don't really have any pans large enough that I want to get dirty, so... I'll just dump the excess that lands on the parchment paper and, and then into the trash. Hmm. Everything is dry, but you can still really clearly see the letters on the blocks. Okay, I think I'm going to sit with this one and try to think of something. Okay, so it's not ideal but I think I'm going to try to use some of the expanding glue to cover these letters once and for all. It wasn't my first choice, but I did want to try out this new glue, and Elmer's has had two days to dry at this point. I'm going to try to smooth out the glue as best I can with a paper clip, and then basically just see how it looks. I, I honestly have no idea how this will turn out, but that is... One of the upsides of making your terrain out of trash, if there was ever a time to get experimental, that would be it. Ah, well, that certainly expanded. Well, now I have a lot of hardened, dripping glue all over the blocks. Um, 
Okay, it's definitely not what I intended, but we'll just call it a happy accident. It actually kind of gives me a pretty cool idea for a paint scheme now. Okay, so now we're just going back to the matte medium and once again, cover the entire model so it has a fairly consistent texture and shine before I prime it. I'm still a bit worried the lid I'm using for a base will be too apparent and too shiny, and that the Elmer's glue might start to peel away without something to lock it down, so this should settle that once and for all. It actually doesn't look half bad. I'll be honest, I, I originally imagined this altar out in the forest with moss and shrubs growing off of it, but now that I've had to use that expanding glue to cover the letters on the blocks, I actually think I have another idea. Okay, now to give you guys some insight, after deciding to go with the volcanic altar theme, I primed and painted this piece twice to completion. And that is why the camera looks so different right now. I sat with this for days, trying to get it right, and even took down all of my recording equipment just to then decide to give it one more try because I just was not happy with it. <sighs> to start, I've primed it black again, and you can probably see some of the old paint showing through, but it should be fine. I'm starting off with Vallejo Lemon Yellow and mixing in about 50-50 with matte medium just to make it a bit less opaque. This yellow is going to be stippled onto every piece that will eventually become lava with a really old brush that I don't mind ruining. And once that's had the time to dry, next up is orange. I actually thought I was going to need a much more detailed brush since I'm loosely trying to stay within the boundaries of the yellow, but eventually I just went back to my big brush. I let that dry and it was time for red. This time I'm trying to hit just the bulbous areas created by the expanding glue, plus a small section of the brim. That insignia is still showing underneath the black primer and the midsection looks a bit barren. I think I'll stipple on a little bit of red and just lean into the design on the lid. Also, I, I think a cloud moved right in front of the sun here, so please excuse the lighting getting darker all of a sudden. Okay, I, I actually think we're almost done here. Next up, I'm switching over to royal purple, and I'm just gonna touch the very center of the most bulbous areas to look like the centers have hardened a bit when exposed to air. That doesn't take long to dry. Now you can skip this part if you'd like your fire effects to look more vibrant, but at least for me, it just looks a bit too bright. I want this lava to look like it's smoldering very slowly, so I'm stippling on a very thin layer of heavily diluted purple all over the model. Still feels like it's missing something though. Center of the base still looks off to me. I think I'm gonna stipple on a small amount of white around this red insignia to make the center look less barren. After that, I'm going to take the same white I just mixed and add a touch of pale blue to do some dry brushing. Adding blue should help the stone edges stand out a bit more from the red and yellow sections compared to if I was just using white. And after that, it's good to go. <laughs> Naturally, I'm putting on 
One last layer of matte medium just to seal everything in and help protect the paint from chipping or weathering. Cheaper than most acrylic varnish and we're all about saving money on this channel. And that's it. One volcanic altar ready for the tabletop. Suddenly I, I actually wish I had a lava themed army to show off alongside it, but my Warhammer models will just have to do, assuming I can get them into frame. If you like this video and want to see more, look for me on Instagram and Twitter. And aside from that, I'll see you guys in the next one.